Hello, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design. We are in the C language now, and in this video, we're going to take a look at while loops and also how variables are implemented. So let's go ahead and fire up CCS right away. Okay, so let's go ahead and start a new project for this video. And so we'll go CCS project, and we'll go ahead and say... <clears throat> Let's call this uh, C underscore, what do I call it? While loops, okay? And then everything's good up here. You got your MCU. Make sure you got empty project with main.c. And this will create our skeleton and life is good. Okay, so now let's see. Okay, so I got everything in here. And what's going to happen is that all this skeleton code, the header, uh, this right here, you know, you can delete that if you want. We'll just leave it. Actually, let's delete it and clean it up. I think they just put that there to show, remind you how to do block comments. But anyway, so we're going to come into our main loop, and we're going to have this statement that stops the watchdog timer. But let's do this. I'm going to create a variable. And so this is, you know, your standard way to do something in C. You go int, and then I do count is equal to zero. And what I've done there is I created a variable called count. I had to tell the compiler the data type and so I gave it a type integer and so that will be implemented as a the standard implementation is a 32-bit twos complement number so that's how the data space will be interpreted uh, as an integer and then I can actually initialize it uh, right away so this would this is like the equivalent of potentially doing a dot short um, but what remember the power of C is that you don't have to tell it where to put this variable you're gonna let the compiler decide because sometimes it might decide that, you know, it doesn't wanna use a, a dedicated space in data memory, like at the beginning, starting address 2000, and it might put this on the stack. It might also decide that since you have enough registers and you're not using a lot of registers in this program, it might put this in a register. So you don't care necessarily where count goes, you're gonna let the compiler figure out where to create that variable. Okay, so I'm going to do a while loop, and remember, a while loop in C, you're going to have <clears throat> a Boolean statement, keyword while, and then a Boolean statement, and if this is true, whatever you put here, this while loop will execute, okay? And if it doesn't, it'll jump out. So for what we want to do is let's create an infinite loop. And so one of the simplest ways to do an infinite loop in uh, C is just do a while one, okay? And so what that does is every time it comes in here, it checks a flag and says, is one a one? Is it true? <clears throat> it's like, it is, absolutely, it always is. So this is how we will never escape this loop. <clears throat> and that's nice because we never wanna hit this return because we're an MCU, right? We, we wanna run forever. And so we have created an infinite loop. So let's take, let's do this. Let's go count is equal to count uh, plus one. And that's the entirety of our loop. And what I care about here is not necessarily the complexity of the while loop or incrementing a variable, it's I wanna see what this does when I dump it into uh, the program memory and see how this is implemented. Now, at the same time, if you run this, the compiler is smart enough to notice that you don't access the outside world. So it will actually remove all your, your entire program. So to prevent that from happening, let's go up and do project <clears throat> properties and come under optimization. And in optimization, turn the entire thing off. Now, you don't do this in a real program because you want it to optimize it, but we're trying to learn about how this is translated <laughs> into opcodes and operands. And so we, we don't get to see that translation if we have the optimizer remove everything. So we're trying to learn right now. So that's why we turned it off. Okay, so let's go ahead and fire up, <clears throat> fire up our board here. Got my board plugged in. I'm going to now I'm going to compile into assembly and then the assembler will take that down to an executable. And here we are. Okay, so let's go ahead and first and foremost, we have a variable now. And so we have a new view that we can take a look at. Notice that up here you have a tab that's called variables. And lo and behold, look at this. You have your variable count. And look at what it's at. It's like a negative <clears throat> 32,000. Kind of interesting. Uh, it turns out that that the compiler, even though that integers are usually defined as a 32-bit number, in this case, the compiler created a 16-bit twos complement number a, in memory. 
Okay, so that's why it's at negative 32, whatever. Um, it, just because a 30, a 16 bit number can take on 65,000 values, 536 different values. And that's in the, half of them are negative, half of them are positive. So anyway, that's interesting. We didn't really even specify whether this should be eight bit, 32 bit, 16 bit. The compiler said, I'm, you're getting a 16 bit number. That's it. <laughs> and then look where it put it. Now, this is what's fascinating. It put it at two FFC. Why in the world would it put it at 2FFC? The reason is that that is on the stack. So it decided that this variable is going to be implemented on the stack. <clears throat> and it did it for you. It didn't, it, it could have gone in a register. It could have gone at the beginning of data memory, which would have been 2000. But the compiler said, you know what? You're going on the stack. And we didn't even care. We're like, thanks a lot. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's run this. So I'm going to put a breakpoint right there. And I'm going to run to the breakpoint and it stops. Okay, so now I'm looking at disassembly. If you don't see disassembly, remember it's over here, view disassembly. And this right here is showing me my statement that I have in, in addition to the comment. And it's showing me where in memory it is. So remember, program memory is at 8,000. So this is down at, our first statement is actually at 803C. So we're way down in program memory before we even get our first statement. And that's because of all the automatic code that was put into program memory for us. So if I come up here to 8,000, it's got all this startup code that's getting the stack pointer ready and it's it's doing some house cleaning or housekeeping to get the system turned on, stuff that we never did when we programmed an assembly. So I'm letting the compiler say, hey, you, got, you had to do some stuff. I'm glad you're doing it. Better you than me, right? And it probably knows more what to do better than I do. Okay, so if I come down to my first statement here's our statement right here so i've got the watchdog whatever this is doing and it translated that into a move so right here move this mask into this address and that did this statement all right interesting okay so now i'm going to come down and here's my statement for int count is equal to zero look at what it did it had an, a statement that cleared this address in the stack pointer Okay, so the stack pointer is pointing up to this location because it pushed this, it pushed something onto the stack or got the stack ready. And this statement right here, the int count didn't necessarily need to do anything other than get the stack pointer ready. But when you cleared it, that had to be translated into an actual instruction. So that's where this clear word came from. Now look at what's going on here. Here's the count is equal to count plus one. Increment that location where count is. And notice once again, you're using register indirect register, you're using indexed registering or indexed addressing, but you're using the stack pointer as where this location is. So the stack pointer is pointing up to here to, you know, and so everything is awesome. Okay. So now, and, and it's actually once we ran it, the stack pointer got to where it needs to be. Okay. So anyway, so we have the increment and now here's the while loop. Okay. So you're going to do this while implementation. And, and notice that the while comes down here because it's trying to make sense of what you did. So the while is associated with the instructions to jump back to the main loop. And so you go, here's your jump, right? And now you're, you're asking like, where in the world are you going? It's going to a label called dollar sign C dollar sign L1. Well, it turns out that when you are in C, you're not necessarily dropping address labels to mark locations in the program memory like we did in assembly. But the program absolutely needs to use address labels because it needs to know where to jump. And so it automatically dropped its own address label right here, which was before the increment instruction. And so it, since it's a computer, it comes up with kind of these nutty uh, <laughs> address label names. And so it came up with dollar sign C, dollar sign L1. And I don't, who knows what that means? I'd C maybe stands for C programming language, L1, maybe it's loop one. Uh, but look at what it does. It does a jump back to here and then it increments, then jumps and then increments and jumps and increments and jumps and increments. It's doing exactly what we wanted to. So now as I step this, let's watch it. It goes down here, it clears that. Now we're in the loop. And now what it's going to do is increment it and then jump, increment it and jump. And look at, you can see what's going on right here. The value is changing. Stack pointer is sitting there. It's not doing anything you know, because it's always pointing to the right address. And it is actually executing. And it basically created assembly code 
honestly, that is pretty close to what we would have done. If I was going to implement this, I would have set up, you know, I would have had an instruction to clear the variable. Then I would have done a main, <clears throat> incremented the variable, and then jump main. And that's exactly what happened. It also put a no op in here because this MSP430, for some reason, it needs to have a no op after jump. <clears throat> if you don't put that, if you go back to all your assembly programs, it had a warning that said, hey, you need to put a no op after the jump. We didn't even do that before, but the C compiler knew to do that and it made this perfect program for us. Okay, that is it. That is the implementation of both variables in while and while loops in C and how they're actually implemented on the MSP430. Now, if I was so interested in letting the compiler do its thing, let's go back and turn on optimizations. So let's put on register optimization and that's, that's always the default. But let's just see what happens now. I'm gonna go ahead and compile this and now I'm interested in kind of the same thing. I wanna see what this compiler is gonna do now. <laughs> so here we go. So I got my breakpoint in there and I'm gonna go ahead and run. And interesting, so let's let's stop this. <clears throat> Actually, I need to keep it in debug mode to see what's going on here. So I'm gonna download it and let's go take a look in program memory. So what actually came out of what I did. So I come down here, here's my main loop. I do the move and then I jump forever. Look at what happened here. It implemented this statement. Okay, it did implement that statement, but then it implemented a main loop and jump main. It removed the count equals count plus one and my variable. So notice my variable's gone. You're like, where did all my stuff go? It's because this compiler decided that since you don't access the outside world, you're not writing a real program, so it just removed all of our code. <laughs> and so that's good, I guess. It's not good if you're trying to learn how this stuff is translated into assembly, but it's really good if you're writing programs and you're gonna let the compiler kind of optimize it out. Okay, that's while loops right there. Very cool, all right, nice work. And as always, remember, support my channel by subscribing and see ya.